Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking at something right here that says three days of pieces and or music and or love. There is a, an event going on this weekend. I am starting early with this open mic without doing a screaming introduction to let everyone know that Jeff Helgeson is actually one of the performers this weekend. He's going to tell you all about it. He's got copies of the play that he is going through a stage run through of right now to start off this open mic. So please, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jeff Helgeson. Thank you very much. Thank you for the chance of being here and essentially doing my dress rehearsal. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the play and then launch into what will be a full presentation. It only runs 20 minutes, so you don't have to rush uh, for the exits right at this absolute second. A um, little explanation. Fall from Grace was originally written in 1988 and maybe only two or three words have been updated subsequently. Um, I created a challenge for myself when I wrote a piece about an erudite, intellectual, aging Bauhaus architect and then found that we couldn't cast it. Um, and so eventually I recruited the retired president of Lake Forest College, Dr. William Graham Cole, author of such works as The Restless Quest of Modern Man from the University, the Oxford University Press. And fortunately, Bill had all the prerequisites. He spoke Latin, Italian, French, and German. And he got all the references in the play. And actually, as we rehearsed it, I learned a lot about my own text from Dr. Cole. Um, after the Victory Gardens production, uh, Bill toured with it at colleges and art galleries throughout the sort of Chicago and New Midwest area and then in about 2010 which was just a, actually a few months before he passed away at the age of 92 Bill said that he thought perhaps I had matured into the role so that's what we're going to find out tonight whether or not he's right in that assessment um, a little more background about the piece it's divided into four sections uh, based upon the dynamic sounds of the Old Testament, and it becomes a kind of secular testament to human culture. Um, and the big secret lurking somewhere in the background is my Bauhaus architect is a 20th century Prometheus, the ancient Greek uh, mythological figure who created the earth according to Greek mythology and all of its inhabitants. Beethoven's only ballet for the creature of Prometheus. And as he gave each of the animals their various attributes, he neglected to give anything special to mankind. And so, to make up for this omission, Prometheus is said to have stolen fire from the gods and given it to mankind, which empowered human beings to the point that they expressed dominance over the other creatures. And so Zeus punished him by chaining him atop Mount Parnassus, where he could look down across the plain and see the evidence of his hubris, the night fires lit by the creatures of Prometheus, those members of the human race. And every day his liver would be ripped out by a vulture and would grow back so that this would continue in a perpetual, eternal cycle of punishment. My 20th century Prometheus, a Bauhaus architect who has built a power plant that illuminates Chicago's lakefront, is in brief summary a failed husband, father, and alienated grandfather who looks at the evidence of his hubris and begins to come to a revelation of the implications of his professional accomplishments. So with that background and introduction, I thank you again for your indulgence and the opportunity to try this out as my dress rehearsal. I'll be right back as soon as I get to the carriage. Thank you. Applause is appropriate. If you wish. My room.
should mention that there is a through composed music by Clayton Horrath, sound design by Wheeler Cole, and technical assistance by Driven Production Studio here in Chicago. Should have 
guessed as much. Always so indulgent. Respectful, even. Yeah, some pedestal. Kept me from her, really. And from the kids. A lifetime of that. Always distant. Always mildly disappointed in the law. Yeah, a hard time for us both. Design, deadlines and delays, dynamos demanding constant modifications, blueprint after blueprint, and I never thought the thing would go online. Never thought that anything would change. But then it did. Stole all the fire that was needed and spread it out across the whole of a populated landscape. Well, cities like that, right? Changing. It's somehow always the same. Dense scatter of glass bound fires and constant flowing streams of light along the whole of the lakefront and far out into the distance. North, where they are back behind me. Then south, and west as far as the eye can see. Ah. Pleases me to look at. Between outs with this, Sullivan, Adler, and Burnham's work, Van Bureau, Bashar Khan, Helmut Jan's work, and even some of my own. Funny, they're in a kind of harmony from here. Some few classic echoes among a sweep of little bauhouses. Rational, utilitarian membranes of steel and glass. Pragmatic units of geometric space interlaced and incandescent with endless spheres and coils and tubes of burning, luminescent filament gas fire. From here, by Mount Caucasus, harmony, right. The appearance of a well-tempered environment. Here, New York, London, Paris, Berlin, Weimar, Athens, Chandigarh, Honolulu, Tokyo, Los Angeles, Houston, Minneapolis. Here, international style more than anyone ever might have dreamed. Form follows function until less is more across the whole face of the earth. A four, say more than some accomplishment. For linear international modernism. Minimalism. More and more of less and less fearful symmetry. Success beyond the wildest of dreams is the dark, fickle fly. Obscurely through my brain, like shadows dim, sweet, awful thoughts, rapid. Not just a movement, minimalism. Not just a philosophy or a school. Not theorists expressing an ideal, issuing a manifesto. Success beyond that laughable degree. Virtually total success. Manifestos have become lost in time, have become Torture and solitude, the 
scorn and despair. But time, as time grows older, teaches all. It should be better. Nothing else will. Well, we've seen to that. Reductionists, rational pragmatists, objective geometric functional formalists. Made a new order. Contextless. Unrelated. Yeah, I could just thought. Free from the burden of the past. Innocent of the fate of Atlas. Other than to become a tiger. Ruthless. Isolated. Chained within a perpetual present that owns no contact with the past and possesses no hope for the future. We, I, made this world. Drew it forward from the chaos of its past and denuded it of its history. Peopled it with earth and water-made creatures in the image of their predecessors. Created schools that train but do not teach. Given richly double meaning to artificial intelligence. Placed theorems in hand which set each moment on the very edge of oblivion. I become death, the destroyer of worlds. The children of Pythagoras no longer are the measure of all things, and they don't even know what they have lost. They are specialized and recycled, trained in the lives of built-in obsolescence, without hope or awareness or even a shadow sense of loss. Their lives have become legalized, and their culture has become ruthless and still. My son, with two terms of high school French, thinks himself Cosmopolitan. <laughs> we oscillate between us without contact, and Heraclitus is unknown to him. Flux is the young. Shampoo his wife may use on my grandson's hair. He is sure. My daughter has artistic ambitions. She hopes to act. She would die to get a part on the soaps. We have washed our hands of history. And what was made within a decade has become nostalgic. And technology runs before us. The dynamo is as outdated as the version. Superconductors speed in the direction of E equals MC squared. Yet the intellect of Henry Adams is still to be surpassed. Anything red is esoteric. Knowledge beyond minimal employment related awareness is elitist. And there is no interdisciplinary understanding. Connectedness is dead. And also spake Zarathustra is the dated echo of the year 2001. Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, and Kant are all dead. But so are Luther, Calvin, and Aquinas. Well, now Marilyn Monroe lives forever. <laughs> while Simone de Beauvoir lies a moldering in the grave. Without reference, without context, without culture, science and technology create animals lost in a void of their own making. Simply minimalize. 
world becomes filled with death.
sounds of Imagine, the Sartreport, and the work of Philip Glass. Universal education to the fullest limits of capacity. strata upon strata of common familiarity to what is and was and may one day be. Let reductional minimalism fall from grace. 32 feet per second per second to the finite speed of light. Less is less. It's infinitely less. Tomorrow, I take my grandson to the zoo and wire his room with constellations to light the night. Bob for allowing me to crash your, Sorry, your feature. <laughs>